Today, I'm going to show you how to build a Canvas course that will teach fourth graders multiplication without taking up any more time on your schedule. The course we build will use three primary features in Canvas. We'll use the pages to create a landing page that will make it easier for students to find the content. Then we'll create quizzes that will actually act as the assessments determining whether or not students can pass off their multiplication facts. And then finally, we'll organize all of this into modules so that students have the ability to pass off each quiz and move through the multiplication facts in a sequential order. Let's get started with the navigation page. This is a brand new Canvas course that we created. I recommend working in a brand new course, not an existing course, because as we create content for this exercise, it will muddy up any existing content that you have. So it's much better to create a brand new fresh course and then enroll your students into this additional course that will act as their multiplication facts exercise course. Uh, the first thing that I'll do is actually go into the settings. I'm gonna uh, adjust the navigation to make it easier on my students. I'll remove everything in here except for modules. So I'm gonna move everything down to the bottom just by dragging and dropping. This is gonna make it so that students are less likely to get confused and they'll really only be able to see the content that's relevant to the multiplication facts. Now let's go into pages and create a Canvas page that will be the home page and the landing page for the multiplication facts. So we'll just call this multiplication facts. I'll put my cursor right here, but I actually want it in the center. And it's important to do this first. Sometimes it can be a little janky if you don't uh, set the set the uh, icon first in the center. And now I'll go ahead and add images. I have previously uploaded my images and I'm just using these simple buttons. Uh, so I've got one through nine here. And I'm going to include a link in the description to these same buttons that you can go in and download if you want to. However, you can also create your own using the Canvas Icon Maker or you, in any other graphics application that you might like. Now, we'll come back to these buttons, uh, but uh, for now, this works. We got it the way we want. So we'll go ahead and hit save. And this is what the page will look like. Students are going to be able to click on each one of these and access the content that they're, uh, you know, access that particular multiplication fact quiz. Now, the next step is creating the quizzes themselves. We want to create quizzes that students are going to be able to navigate on their own. They don't need help. We also want to make it so that students can take the quiz as many times as they want so that they can practice over and over and over again until they get it right. We don't want to have to intervene in the quizzes. Uh, in other words, we don't want to have to grade it every single time the student takes a quiz. That's going to add more time to our plate. We really want this to be a self-guided exercise for the students. So to do these things, things that we're talking about, we're going to need to create quizzes in two steps. The first is to create a quiz bank. And what that will do is enable us to create quizzes that have a randomized order of questions every single time the students take it. We want this because we want students to be able to take it multiple times and not just memorize the sequence or the order of the questions, but actually have to be required to do the multiplication facts and uh, think about them instead of just memorizing the sequence. To, to set a quiz up like that, you have to set up a question bank. So we'll set up a question bank first and then we'll go in and set up a quiz that will uh, have all the settings we need to make this uh, effective for our students. Now, just a heads up before I jump into the quizzes. This does take a long time to create. Uh, this is the bulk of the time. So we're really only going to create a sample bit of content. We're not going to create everything, uh, but uh, this should give you an idea of what you can do in order to create this effect or create this experience for your students. So I jumped into quizzes right over here. Um, so I'm in the quizzes area, but instead of creating a quiz, I'm going to click these three dots right up here on the right and click manage question banks. If you happen to use new quizzes, this will look a little bit different for you. I'm doing this all in the Canvas Classic quizzes. So I click Add Question Bank, and we're just going to call this 1x, okay? Um, we'll have a question bank for every single multiplica multiplication fact set. So we'll have 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, so on and so forth. I'm not going to create all of those today. I'm only going to create the 1x quiz bank, but creating all the following quiz banks or the question banks will look the same. So we go ahead and hit Enter, and then go into that question bank. Now we need to add our questions, so I click Add Question. 
and uh, I'm gonna select a numerical answer here. It's gonna give me options by default, four options for my answers. I really don't need four, I just need one. So I'm gonna click the little trash can over here on the right. Now I've got one, and then in my, uh, in my box, I'm just gonna say one X one. Right, so that's one times one. I'm gonna change this to 18 font, make it a little easier to see. Heck, you can even go bigger and say, okay, we're gonna go really big, 36 point font. And then we add in our answer down here below, hit update question, and that question's finished. We then go through the same process for all other questions. The big thing is just making sure we're consistent in our formatting so it doesn't throw students off and uh, making sure that we put the correct answers in here. I'm gonna go ahead and run through this really quickly and then I'll see you on the other side. All right, so now I have one through nine. That's all I'm gonna create for today. You can create as many as you like, uh, up to whatever number you like, and it's essentially the same concept. You'll just need to create more questions. Now that we have our quiz bank created, or our question bank, I'm gonna jump back to quizzes, and then come right up here to the top right, click Add Quiz. Again, I'm working in Classic Quiz. You can still do this using um, new quizzes. It's just gonna, again, look a little bit different. So uh, I'm creating my ones quiz, so I'll just call it ones. And then I'm not gonna include a description in my case, though you're welcome to include one in yours. Uh, the quiz type needs to be a graded quiz. Uh, down below the other options you'll wanna pay attention to is I wanna put a time limit on it. This is so that students are kind of pressed. They can't just look up the answers or use a calculator. They have to move through it quickly. I don't know how long you need to make it. Honestly, I'm not a fourth grade teacher, so I'm not as familiar with what it should be, um, but you'll set whatever time limit based on the number of questions you have. I do wanna allow multiple attempts because this is what's gonna allow students to take the quiz over and over and over and over again. So if they're not able to achieve a 100% or the whatever score threshold that I set, I can have them take the quiz as many times as they want. And then down below, let students see their quiz response. I want that and I want them to be able to see the correct answers. That way every time they can go and look which ones they missed, what they missed it by and how they might have made their mistake. I also want to show one question at a time. That's totally optional, something that I prefer on these types of quizzes, but again, that's up to you. And then uh, I think this is really all I need. So now that I have my settings set, I'm going to come up here to questions. And this is where I'm going to add my quiz questions in. And because we created a question bank, instead of adding questions one by one, all we have to do is click add new question group. I'm gonna go ahead and just say pick nine questions because that's how many questions I have. And I'm gonna link it to my ones question bank. Now it looks like I have a couple um, that I've created in the past for other exercises. It doesn't really matter which one I pick. I'll go ahead and select this one. Hit select bank. And now the way that this is set up, I have to click create group. Don't forget that step. But once I've done that, now if I go back, I'm gonna hit save and let's preview this. You'll kind of see how it works. So it shows me one question at a time. I got one times four, I add four, right? And hit um, submit quiz. Yep, we're gonna submit anyway, even though we didn't answer everything. Um, so we can see we got this one right, but we got all the others wrong and it shows the answers. And this is how students will see it as well. Um, I can actually preview it again. I can take it as many times as I want, um, even as a student, not just as the teacher previewing it. But I now have my quiz set up. So we've gone through two of the steps. We set up that first page. We've now created our quiz using the quiz bank or the question bank and the actual quiz settings. Now the last step, and this is a critical step, you can't skip this step, is to go into modules and set up my modules this is going to create a framework that basically makes it so that students can't just jump straight to eight multiplication facts, for example. Now you could choose to do it that way, make it so that students can kind of just pick and choose. They don't have to go in order, but uh, this really gives you either option. Either way, you'll still want to set up these requirements, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. So if I come in here and hit add module, I can say one X, okay, and hit add module. And then let's create the 2x and the 3x just for reference, even though we really aren't going to be building this out all the way. But the idea is you'd create one for every single multiplication fact set that you have. So I'm gonna come in here and in my ones, I click add, I'm gonna go to quizzes and select ones hit add. Now the next one, 2x, I don't have a quiz for that one yet. I'm gonna really quickly go in and create a quiz. Um, it'll take me just a minute and we'll be right back. 
By the way, I'm just linking this to my ones again, just for illustration and get the content in there. You'll want to create your question banks and link it to the appropriate one. Uh, otherwise, you know, you won't get the effect that you want. <laughs> okay, so now we have a twos quiz as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my two module. Go ahead and add that here. And uh, the last step that we need to take to really make this, well, this isn't really the last step, but to finalize our module setup, we need to set requirements and prerequisites. And this is a pretty easy process to follow. Uh, this is really what you're gonna do after you have all your quizzes in, but uh, just for illustrative purposes, we'll do it with just ones and twos here. So you'll wanna set the requirements for each module by going to the settings on each module. Make sure you're on the module settings, uh, meaning the one that associates with the title of the module, not the individual content settings. I click on this, click edit, and then I'm gonna add requirement. Uh, I'm gonna say for ones, the quiz ones, I want students to score at least nine out of nine. I want them to be able to get 100%, but keep in mind, they can take it over and over and over again. So even if they don't get it the first time, they'll have to practice over and over and over again. Twos, I'm gonna do the same thing. We come in here, add a requirement. For the twos, score at least, same thing. We want a nine, right? So we update that. Now we've got ones and twos in there. If you want students to be able to pick whichever one they want, uh, this is where you'd stop. You don't wanna put prerequisites in. But in my case, I wanna make it so that students have to start with ones and then they move through and do their twos once they've completed their ones, then they move through do their threes once they've completed their twos, so on and so forth. So to do that, I need to set up prerequisites on my modules. I don't need anything on ones because that's the first one. Um, but then I click on the three dots on my twos, hit edit, add a prerequisite and just select ones. Uh, this will only work if ones comes prior to twos in your module settings or in your module setting uh, format. So in your module structure, you have to make sure they're in the order that you want students to move through them. You can't put nines at top or anything like that if you're wanting to create that linear look. Um, now, you, I'll show you, you can actually set this up so that students don't even have to use modules to navigate through these, and that's what I'll show you here in just a moment. But just to give you an idea of how this looks, we'll go ahead and publish these and jump into student view. Uh, so here, I'm, I'm actually going to add a prerequisite here for twos on threes that way. There's nothing in there, but uh, it will lock up that module. So I jump into student view. And now I've got ones, students can see twos, but they can't click on it, they can't access it. Uh, I'll go ahead and complete the quiz as a student, so you can kind of see how this looks. So I take the quiz. I'm gonna run through this really quick, it should take me just a minute. Okay, perfect, so I got nine out of nine. Um, if the student misses any, it's not a big deal. You can actually just take the quiz again. I can even take it again still, considering that I got nine out of nine, I don't need to, but I can take the quiz again. But look what this has done to my modules. So if I go to my modules now, as a student, twos is now unlocked. So I can access the twos area, I can take that quiz. You'll notice that three is still locked up and it says my prerequisite is to complete the twos. You'll also notice I've got a little checkbox here. So the requirements give you the checkboxes. So even if you don't set up the prerequisites that require students to move through an order, you probably still want the requirements just because it will show students when they come to the modules area, what they've completed and what they haven't completed. So it'll give them a little checkbox and we know they're good to go. Now let's leave student view and set just a couple more things up for our student navigation to make it a little easier. Now you remember I created that page previously, so we're gonna jump back to that page. Now that we have some of our content created, in my multiplication facts page, I wanna go in and click edit. And I'm going to link these buttons to their uh, respective quizzes so that students aren't even going to use the modules area to navigate to their quizzes. They're actually just going to use these buttons. So I click on the relative, you know, the image that I want to link and I click course link. Uh, you could either link it to the modules. So I see these modules here. In this case, I'm actually going to link it directly to the quiz. So we'll link it to ones and then we'll link this one to twos and then we'll close out of this. The other thing I'm just gonna add because it's a good design practice, you'll notice that my accessibility checker's freaking out. This is because um, I didn't add proper alt text, so we'll just go ahead and add that really quick. This is so that if a student using a screen reader is going through and um, trying to read through this page, it won't read the, the weird funky um, file names, it'll instead read whatever I put in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add those here, hit apply. 
And now that we're all good there, we'll hit save. Uh, finally, I want to make this my home page, so I'm going to publish this page and then click the menu and say use as front page. Uh, and then back at the home page, I'm going to select choose home page, pages front page, and hit save. So now when students jump in, this is what they see. They'll just see these buttons. They click on one, it will take them to that quiz. And then if they click home, it's going to take them right back to the home page. Uh, if I click two, takes them to that page. Now if they try to go to the twos but they haven't quite completed it, let me show you what this looks like. So we'll go into student view and to do this I'm going to have to reset my test student because I already completed ones. So now that it's been reset, let's click on twos. It says this quiz is part of the module 2x and hasn't been unlocked yet. The following requirements need to be completed before the page will be unlocked. Ones. So I can click on ones and now I can do my one. So it's still, even though students are navigating to this from the home page, they still will be locked up. Um, anyway, so if you set all this structure up, students will have a space where they can practice multiplication, they can take the quizzes as many times as they want, you don't have to grade them, this is all self-paced, and uh, actually, even though we just use this with multiplication, it can be applied to other mathematical concepts as well. Uh, and if it's something that's not linear and it's just individual concepts that are kind of spread across, you could set up modules that allow students to pass off various concepts. Uh, if you want to take this a step further, you can actually add badges, but you can add badges so that students, when they complete their particular multiplication facts, you know, they'll get a badge for each one that they complete. So there's a lot of really cool things you can do with this. It makes it a lot of fun for your students because they can be independent. Uh, hopefully it helps you out and you can find an application in your class. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic day. Bye.